This year, Governor Cuomo set out to uproot and overhaul the state's education system. In his budget, he proposed major reforms to education policy, including teacher evaluations, tenure, and much more. But with just a few days left to pass an on-time spending plan, these proposals may not come to light, at least not in the budget. Joining me from the Capitol to discuss the latest is Senator John Flanagan. He is the chair of the Senate Education Committee. Welcome, Senator. Good to see you. Thank you, Liz. Uh, so, you know, you and I spoke before this whole budget thing got started and you predicted that there would be fireworks and as it turns out, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sometimes it's not always fun being right, but yes, okay. Um, today, the governor spoke to your conference behind closed doors. That's an unusual situation. We don't see that happen. Can you remember the last time that actually occurred with this governor? No, I can't. Um, I think you're absolutely right. But, you know, we, he was certainly welcomed in. We had a very good discussion. People were frank in terms of their questions, and uh, they were certainly very forthright in their comments, which I believe the governor appreciated. Yeah, I mean, did you take it as a sign that he, in fact, does want to make a deal and that he is uh, malleable, if you will? I mean, he already has taken out some parts of his <clears throat> education uh, reform agenda and put them aside for post-budget negotiations. Yeah, I, I think there's a, a balance here. One is. If, the, if we can come up with good policy proposals, whether it's on education or something else, and do it within the context of the budget, if it's going to be good enough in June, there's no reason to wait. We could do it now. However, the breadth and scope of what he offered, not just in terms of education, but particularly in that area, has made it more challenging because in isolation, these issues are challenging. When you take them in totality, it's a lot more vexing. It's complicated. It's technical. And our members, on behalf of our uh, taxpayers and constituents have a wide variety of questions before they want to sort of jump into the fray. My assessment is that the teacher evaluation piece is probably the stickiest wicket that you've got. Um, you should you should basically correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think I think that's probably conventional wisdom at the Capitol at this point. Today, the majority leader Dean Skelos came out of this conference and said, "Well, we might have a commission. We we might just kick it to a commission, and they're going to deal with this." Um, I have characterized that as punting. Forgive me, uh, do you see it that way? I would say a couple of things. You know, we, everyone wants a fair <coughs> and appropriate evaluation. Nobody wants to have some over-the-top measure that's going to have adverse effects on students, parents, and potentially teachers. If you look last year, we took steps in the budget, including in the latter part of the session, that would have helped provide a safety net, and obviously that bill ultimately got vetoed. Um, having served on the Governor's Education Reform Commission and knowing the potential work of a commission, I think I could make a fair argument that these issues are so, uh, so important that it's probably not a bad idea to take that deep breath and bring in some potential people who are expert in their field, who can help us coalesce behind a number of ideas that could potentially uh, bear fruit before the end of the session in June. Okay, so that would be the timeline before the end of the session in June. So the, the goal would be to put together this commission. Um, who would sit on it? Well, I, I would say respectfully, Liz, that, and, you know, and this is where at a juncture where the time is uh, evolving so quickly and so are the issues. Right now, there are ongoing discussions between and amongst the Assembly, the Senate, and the Governor. And can I tell you that there's a final agreement? No, because there's a lot of questions. But I think it's very fair to say that these issues can and should be resolved before the end of the session. And who would serve on it? That's actually open to discussion right now. You obviously want to have people who have... Uh, advanced knowledge and degrees and expertise in the area of education. You know, terms like pedagogy and psychometrics and uh, issues like that are properly advanced, and yet we all understand that if you have to have the right people at the table. Right, okay. What uh, about the other things that the governor yesterday had put forth through a statement with his communications director, Melissa DeRosa, saying, well, these other things, yes, we've put uh, the education tax credit to the side, we put DREAM Act to the side, we'll deal with those things later, New York City <coughs> mayoral control perhaps to the side, charter cap, okay. But there are other things. Uh, tenure reform, um, bonuses for teacher performance, uh, maybe even uh, some encouragement in terms of tuition to uh, get teachers, to get people to be teachers, to get quality teachers to get into the field. Right. There, there is discussion certainly in terms of recruitment of the, the best and brightest students at our colleges and universities. So on the front end of the spectrum, the governor has advanced proposals that I, I think everyone largely embraces. Let's get people with higher GPAs. Let's set the bar a little higher, but fair at the same time. So 
That, I think, is uh, being discussed. I, I can represent, I think, fairly. I haven't heard any significant discussion on any type of bonus uh, for teachers. I think that even if that were to come up, my sense is that would probably be outside of our discussions. Mm. I can only represent what I know is being discussed. And again, these issues, the governor deserves credit for advancing a very hard dialogue on issues that really do need to be addressed. And I think the primary objection, if there is one, is the overlap and the, sort of the interwoven nature of all of them. Because uh, if they were looked at on their own, they're still complex issues. So how do you deal with performance? How do you deal with models? How do you deal with testing? What's appropriate level of testing? Who should be making that decision? Should it be decided at the state level? Should we give more authority to SED and others? And what kind of role should districts be playing? And certainly all the bargaining units. So there, no matter what happens, there are a multitude of issues. But uh, as I've said to you before, I don't think we should shy away from having what are difficult, but potentially uh, extraordinarily beneficial discussions. Where are we then on the money piece? I mean, do you still feel like the governor is hewing to his requirement that you embrace his reform agenda to the degree that it's now been winnowed <clears throat> in order to get the high number 1.1? I mean, you guys wanted close to 1.9 billion dollars. Then the assembly came in at 1.8. And last I heard there was a table target at the at the committee of 1.4 in that neighborhood. I mean, it's all over the place right now. Yeah, it, it's all over the place, but the way the governor constructed the budget, he certainly came in at 1.1, then changed certain things in his 30-day amendments. Here would be my expectation. Both the Senate and the Assembly have rejected any direct correlation or link to reform and funding. Right. On, a, on a professional and a personal level, I don't like the correlation. I think we can do both, and we could do both within the context of the budget, but I don't want to set a precedent, and I don't think it's inherently uh, appropriate to do something like that. But that, that should not dissuade us, nor should it um, let us avoid the issues that need to be addressed, and they can be done within the budget. But I have to tell you, I'm delighted that you mentioned the funding. The Senate's number one priority was, has been, will be the GEA. We've talked about it more than anybody else. Yeah. We're the only ones that have advocated for its full elimination as quickly as possible. And if we could this year, I, I believe it would be fair to represent that we will all end up north of the governor's $1.1 billion, but below what the Assembly and the Senate advance, which is really uh, consistent with historical patterns. Okay, the other issue that I know that you guys broached behind closed doors is the question of ethics reform. The governor seems to have <clears throat> softened his position on education, his, his, his requirements that education reform agenda be uh, in, in its entirety accepted by the legislature, et cetera. You and I talked about his sort of my way or the highway approach, which obviously you disagree in terms of linkage, and I get it. He is saying, however, that he is willing to sacrifice an on-time budget in order to get ethics reform. Now, he's already made a deal with the Assembly Democrats. It's the Senate Republicans that have an issue in terms of disclosure, clearly. Did you make any headway with that today? Well, you know, I, I would also say <clears throat> that it's always nice to be invited to the dance. <laughs> and I think it would have been more fruitful had there been three-way discussions on that as opposed to two-way discussions that... Uh, purport to represent an agreement, but certainly we're not there. And I believe that there are legitimate discussions. We believe in disclosure. We believe in transparency. In the governor's first term, we enacted what at the time were considered sweeping ethics reforms, and I supported them, as did many of my colleagues. And I know many of my colleagues would be looking at how do you do appropriate disclosure. But I, I don't think it is unreasonable, nor is it unfair, for people who are in the professions to be concerned about their clients and if you are doing business with a client and that person has no business before the state of New York, um, I think there's a legitimate question as to why that should have to be disclosed. Mm. And I take, I know my colleagues and I, no matter what the profession, but particularly for those who practice law, I think having attorneys in the legislature has an inherent value and benefit. And particularly when you have seasoned professionals, a gentleman like Mike Ranzenhofer, Tom O'Mara, John DeFrancisco, John Bonasic, all of whom have had extensive experience in law, Andrew Lanza. I don't want to lose that. I don't want people to have to make um, what, I don't know if it would be a Hobson's choice, but um, be put in a position where you have to say, the rules are now different for everyone but this group. Hmm. And I don't condone anything that would be inappropriate or unethical, but we have vehicles to protect the public. We have vehicles to protect our clients and the rules of ethics, the canons of professional responsibility, all of those things are actually relevant. 
and we take that charge seriously. So the governor um, is certainly very concerned about these issues, and rightfully so. The whole notion of restoring public trust and confidence in government is something that we should embrace and certainly not dismiss. But the gravity of these issues, they have far long-term reaching implications. Okay. This is not something that's just for tomorrow. No, well, right, except for the fact that the deadline is looming. And if you in, wanted to you know, put a timeline on it, would you say that there will be an on-time budget? Yes, I believe there will be an on-time budget. And that is the perfect segue to dovetail off the governor's approach. Hard driving, aggressive. Um, and if you look at the finance hearings this year, the budget hearings, yes. they were a lot longer because there were so many policy proposals in there. But at the end of the day, as it is every year, including with this governor in his first four years, we ended up compromising. He didn't get everything he wanted. We certainly didn't get everything we wanted. But we are look at, looking very closely. Property tax credit, that's something that has been an overarching theme for our members. Right. And it looks like we're pretty much there. So there's a lot of very good things that are either resolved or on the cusp of being resolved. And, you know, while there is a lot of focus on these other issues, uh, I don't think we should be overlooking transportation, the environment, health, mental health, OPWDD, because this is a big state and we have a lot of needs that need to be met in every region of the state. Well, we will get to all of those and more, I hope, before the week is out. Senator Flanagan, I thank you so much for your time. Liz, thanks, as always. Be well.